When I was a child and growing up with feminist press books in my home, this book was one that was very striking to me. This book is I Love Myself When I Am Laughing, a Zora Neale Hurston reader. I loved it because this was a person who reminded me of all of the women that I looked up to. My mom's artistic and quirky sister, the dialect of my southern whip-smart grandmother and my mom, and the boldness that I felt like I'd inherited early on from all of these black feminist matriarchs who raised me up. I am the youngest person to be the director of the press, as well as the first woman of color to be in this position in an organization that is 47 years old and we're nearing our 50th birthday. I am deeply honored to be building on the legacy of Florence Howe, who had a broad vision during a time when it was very bold and courageous to talk about centering the voices of women, feminist, people of color, and others whose voices were in the margins. I was one of those people, and the feminist press gave me an opportunity to publish with activists and scholars who I looked up to in several anthologies, including Slut and I Still Believe Anita Hill. And having those bylines helped me to get other writing opportunities and helped me build my voice and strengthen it as a feminist leader and as a writer. My job is making sure that the feminist press is healthy, strong, and sustainable. That entails fundraising, editorial work, events, make sure that as many feminist books are being published as possible. And any given day, I could be meeting with people from the publishing industry, from academia, from feminist movement organizations, or even people who are engaged in shaping a political agenda. How did you get from that place of despair or disorientation to a place of action and impact. The feminist press has never been afraid to publish books that others might deem too radical, too risky, or too controversial. Long before other people were creating children's books about non-traditional families, the feminist press was doing that. We have a book, Radical Reproductive Justice, now that moves beyond the traditional means of how people talk about abortion rights and reproductive rights and justice in our country. We have a new children's book, How Mamas Love Their Babies, about how mamas support their babies along a spectrum of work, from domestic work to sex work to anything in between. And we're unafraid to deal with the nuances of women and non-binary people's lives and to air them out with respect and dignity and without judgment. Election 2016 was one of the worst nights of my life. But then this book spoke to me from my shelf, but some of us are brave, and reminded me that I came from a lineage of fighters and resistors who saw a brighter future in vision when the horizon looked bleak. There's a reason that authoritarian regimes go after intellectuals first. There's a reason why historically they have burned and banned books. And that is because books are powerful. In this moment, what I feel called to do and what our team feels called to do is to ensure that our books inspire people to vote, to run for office, to take action in their communities, to stretch their minds and to stretch themselves so that they're thinking and acting in ways that will benefit not just the present, but the next generation.